Hello and welcome to this Altus webinar on digital ecosystem management. For those of you I haven't met yet, my name is Adam Jones. I'm a senior consultant here at Altus Consulting. Now, I recently gave this presentation at the Platforum's D2C conference in London. That audience was focused on D2C wealth platforms. However, the concept I'm going to talk about today, digital ecosystem management, applies equally to other areas of financial services. At that conference, uh, the message that chimed with me most from all the various different debates and discussions during the day was that D2C is different. There are more customer touch points in D2C, more ways for us to communicate with our clients. And in turn, that means there's more transactions coming through our systems and more bits of data being held within our IT estate. There's a fundamentally different marketing machine behind D2C, a different way of talking to our consumers. And we're usually dealing with a 24 seven delivery, often around the world. The consumers themselves are, are different. So in an intermediated space, a lot of consumers are happy with quants and charts and metrics and spurious amounts of information. Whereas in the direct space, people want simplicity, they want clarity, and the ease of understanding that goes with that. They want help and support, and dare I say it, they want guidance and advice. Now on top of all of this, there's actually a need for uniformity when delivering a D2C platform or a D2C proposition. In intermediated models, it's quite common to write bespoke code to fit in with certain key value clients like big networks or big firms of IFAs. In D2C, you can't go writing code for individual clients. That said, you don't want a rigid and non-flexible journey. So the challenge is for D2C providers to weave together an interesting journey which varies for all of their clients. And that challenge can only be met with technology. So I'd just like to step through the agenda for this webinar. I'm going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of buying best of breed software and then talk about some of the challenges that are posed integrating this software with your IT estate. I'm then going to move through to something we at Altus call digital ecosystem management as a way of resolving some of the challenges posed by a complex mesh of best of breed technologies in your ecosystem. Okay. So accepting that D2C is very different and accepting that the challenges D2C brings need to be addressed through technology, most firms are left with a pretty simple question. Do I buy in software or do I build my own software? Now, I'm not going to go into a detailed pros and cons list on this subject. There are thousands of pages on the Internet dedicated to this topic and a quick Google will soon point you in the right direction. One thing I will say is that often, especially in financial services, buying in software has a bit of a bad reputation. I think this stems from a lot of uh, more traditional approaches where large scale off the shelf software has been purchased. Um, it's been used in a way it probably wasn't intended for, quite often with the kind of catchphrase of we've bought it so we'll use it. Um, and what that means is you end up with a solution that isn't really fit for purpose, being shoehorned into, into a place within your ecosystem. Those problems are then compounded by a lack of easy integration, so bespoke APIs, complex languages being used, and, and issues in change management that really have led to some quite difficult solutions being in place. When I look into the market today to find best of breed vendors, what I actually see are very different shapes of solution. I see smaller solutions which are focused on specific problems and solving specific challenges for organizations. On top of that, these software solutions have much more open forms of integration, much clearer and more standard APIs to allow that integration, and much more support from vendors in terms of change management. So alongside those benefits and that change really that we've seen over the last 10 to 20 years, I think there are some real key benefits to buying in software generally. It should increase your speed to market you should be able to implement this software quicker than it would take to build the same functionality. You should also be able to access complex functionality that may be the knowledge for which is outside the remit of your organization generally. 
In addition to buying the software, you're usually buying support and training. You're usually buying assistance from the software vendor. And actually, compared to a big build program, you should really be decreasing the project risk as a result of buying in software. So those are some of the benefits or some of the reasons we might look to buy best of breed software. But actually, best of breed software and integrating that into your estate brings with it challenges. The increased number of vendors in your IT estate increases the amount of complexity. It becomes quite clear if we look at the last 20 years or so of, of IT within your organization. If you roll back the clock far enough, you'll find a mainframe. It's a big box, it's got a tape machine on it, it's got some lights and a guy in a lab coat next to it poking it. And it is the central store for all of your data, all of your client processing, all of your business logic. All of this exists within this one box. From an IT point of view, it's very straightforward. As we move on through time, we start to add things to our estate. We start to add end user computing or desktop computers, which are pulling pieces of information from this mainframe processing them, feeding it back into the mainframe. And then in time, we start adding servers into our IT estate, where we've got applications running on these server racks, pushing data around our ecosystem. Eventually, we end up in a position which is probably similar to where most organizations are now. We've introduced cloud computing, this concept that data and processing is happening over the internet and we're pulling data down from the internet into our ecosystem, presenting that out to clients. And also we've got a proliferation of mobile devices which brings with it its own challenges. So what we end up with is a complex mesh of different technologies existing within our ecosystem. And that complexity can lead to systems failure. Now we've all had our burning platform moments. We've all had those times we wish we could forget. Broadly in our work at Altus, we see three key challenges presented to organizations as a result of the increasing complexity from best of breed solutions. The first of those challenges is change management. Having more vendors in your estate means multiple release cycles. So the frequencies at which you get your bits of software it means multiple sets of system requirements, so the bits of kit you need to support your software. It means vendor-driven change, so you're no longer responsible solely for change in your ecosystem. You can be subject to change from your software vendors. And because there are more people in the estate, we need more governance to manage that, and we need more requirements documentation to see how we can join these bits of software together. So change management presents a key challenge for us when integrating best of breed software solutions. Supplier management is equally as important. We have a bigger management overhead because we're dealing with more parties. We have more user groups to attend, more commercial negotiations to have, which in turn lead to more contracts. Those contracts have different renewal cycles and the contracts also have different licensing models. Different licensing models are a challenge to you as a business because you need to be able to understand your return on investment calculation. You need to understand how you can build a business case for these pieces of software. And equally, challenging a software vendor's licensing model may mean that you lose some of the scale that you were hoping for. What I see in a lot of organizations that I work with is a tendency to try and deal with these issues through the definition of verbose and sprawling service level agreements. The problem with these is they often fail to understand the true criticality of a service. They fail to understand exactly which items will lead to client failure, will lead to a customer journey being broken. And those are the bits that really matter to you as a business and to your consumers. So change management is a key area of challenge. Supplier management is another key area of challenge. And data management is also a complexity for organizations. Anyone in financial services will be familiar with the concept that you might onboard a client and then they might be your client for a decade. In that time, they buy some more products from you as an organization. They get married, they move house, they have some children. And what you end up with at the end of that time period is a complex mesh of data, usually spread across numerous different computer systems serving multiple purposes. And that brings some key challenges to organizations in understanding which pieces of that data 
are accurate, whether they are consistent between different systems, and who has the right to modify that data. Now, these problems are compounded when we're dealing with best of breed vendors, because quite often the solutions you're introducing will be reliant on some form of data provision from you as an organization. For example, tell me Mr. Smith's age, his pension contribution rate, the amount of money in his pension pot, and his fund allocation, and I'll return a projection of his retirement, a stochastic forecast of what might come. Well, in order to introduce that functionality, you're reliant as a business on being able to provide that data about your client in a consistent and meaningful way across your estate. And when we're saying providing that data, quite often we're meaning that that data might have to be transmitted outside the walls of your organization. So across all of these challenges, we have the ongoing need to provide data protection for our clients and for our consumers. So data management is another one of our key challenges that brought about and compounded by the introduction of multiple vendors into our ecosystem. Accepting that those are some of the challenges that are raised, there are ways to deal with this. We at Altus often talk about a thing called digital ecosystem management. And I'd just like to run you through some of the principal tenets of that today. So the first of these tenets is IT versus the business. I've been in any number of meetings with business representatives bemoaning the lack of engagement from IT. They just don't get the customer outcome we're aiming for, they'll say. They don't understand what it is we're doing for our consumers. Well, I can tell you I've also been in just as many meetings with IT bemoaning the lack of engagement from the business. They just don't understand the implications of this on some arcane bit of infrastructure, they'll say. Well, these conversations aren't helpful. If we want to deliver a frictionless experience for our clients and offer them a best of breed proposition in the market, then we need collaborative working between marketing, proposition, operations, and technology functions within the business to deliver that solution. Now, many organizations are trying to address this problem at the moment. You'll see the rise of digital teams and digital experts within organizations. This is a fantastic start, and the raison d'etre behind a lot of these digital teams is solid. Some of the challenges that I see working with clients, though, is that a number of these digital teams can become silos in their own right. They can focus solely on new proposition and ignore the legacy business which still exists in the estate, or they can bypass the existing IT infrastructure and almost become shadow units within the business. So there are still some challenges there, but it's the collaborative working that's really key for digital ecosystem management. So accepting we need a more collaborative approach for technology in the business working together, I think it's important then to have a focus on customer experience. We're dealing with a disparate IT estate, as we've already said. We've got multiple vendors in it delivering different services. Some of those services will be offering 24-7 functionality, and some will be updated daily or weekly or even less frequently. Of the services, some will be within our estate and therefore completely within our control, while others will be completely out of our hands. The important thing is that we as a business build buffering against system failure, which will inevitably happen. Our digital ecosystem managers need to take responsibility for building in circuit breaking within our ecosystem to ensure that clients do not bear the brunt of system failure of poor process definition. We may well need a new infrastructure to support this, and it's about being open to that idea. We're going to need to get code out into a live environment more quickly and fluidly than we ever have before. And equally, we're going to learn from some of those code changes and have to roll them back and have to go back to the drawing board on some changes. This is healthy and it's to be expected. And once we've delivered that code, we'll need an ongoing program of monitoring and stewardship, which keeps an eye on the health of the ecosystem that we're building. So accepting that we need collaborative working and we also need to focus on our customer experience, I'd argue that we need a new set of skills within the technology function of our organizations. We need customer-focused staff who really understand what the business objectives are regarding customer values, and they need to be collaborative workers, as we've already stated, working across marketing, proposition, operations, and technology. They need to be integration specialists because a huge part of this job is weaving together different bits of technology. 
and they need to be architectural visionaries to accomplish this in the context of the overall enterprise. They also need to be business experts with a really solid handle on business objectives, the key processes and the key principles that sit behind that. So for us at Altus, that's kind of the principal tenets of digital ecosystem management. It's collaborative working, a focus on customer experience and a requirement for new skills within the IT and technology functions. I'll just recap on the agenda that we set out at the beginning of this webinar. We said we'd talk about why you might buy best of breed software and then we'd work through some of the challenges that faced. We talked about data management, we talked about change management, we talked about supplier management as being three key challenges. And then we went on to talk about digital ecosystem management, some principal tenets that underpin how you as an organization can deal with some of these challenges. And I'd actually like to leave you with some ideas as to how you might start to bring about this change within your organizations. So firstly, it's fundamental that you design your landscape. You understand which bits of technology you have in your estate at the moment, and equally, what your strategic objectives are. By doing this, you can understand which components you need to buy in to plug the gaps in that landscape. And once you understand what the shape of those components are, it's about prudent selection of leading vendors to ensure that the components you pick are going to work well with you as a business and the ecosystem into which they're being placed. Following on from that, it's about putting in a monitoring system or a framework to keep an eye on your ecosystem's health, to check the pulse. And finally, you need to reshape your organization to fit in with this new way of collaborative working. You need to look at how your teams and business units are designed to ensure that it supports the management of your digital ecosystem. So if you've got any questions about this, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me. And thank you very much for your time.